Okay, so now we're here back in our application, and I'm going to uh, change up what this looks like for a second here. We're going to go to Git Bootstrap, um, and let's go find the Jumbotron, which I believe is under Components. Uh, we'll grab a Jumbotron. Let's go ahead and grab this default one and place it into our application. So that's going to be an index.html. We can go ahead and get rid of all of this here. And let's just say, welcome. This is just a clone. And let's say, log in. We would go ahead and set this up to, to log those people in. We don't want to deal with the um, if else right now, so let's just say learn more and we'll link that to another page later. But if we now come back into our app, now we'll see that we have a little bit more going on. So let's go ahead and what we need to do now is figure out how to create our pins. So if we pull up Adam, and let's go ahead and close out of all of these, you'll see that right now we just have an application controller and a home controller. We do not yet have a pin um, controller. We also do not have a pin model. So we have a user model, and that's using device. And that's working. We've been using that, and that looks great. And what we can do now is look at how we might want to create all of our pins. So we can use Rails generators to generate each of these items. So what we would need to do is do something like Rails generate um, model pin and in the case of what we're building, we want to do something like a description and let them either type in some text, let's say a string, so up to 255 characters. And I think that's pretty good. We don't really need that much more. But if we do this, and right now I'm just typing these out so that we can talk through them, um, this would generate us a model. So we'll say generate our pin model. And then what we're going to want to do is generate our pin controller. And we'll have Rails generate controller pins. And so this will go through and know how to uh, relate to the pin model, which is singular, and the pins controller, which is plural. And in here we can also define the different methods that we'd like to define. So we're going to have new, edit, show, index. Um, let's do destroy, update, and create. I think those will be all of them. So if we do this, what will happen is it will create a method inside the pins controller for new, edit, show, index, destroy, update, and create. It will also create a bunch of views for us inside of app slash views slash pins we will end up with an index.html.erb, a new.html.erb, a show.html.erb, edit. I'm just going to write all of these out. And this is because it, we're telling it to create all these things. Now, most of these we do need. Um, index, new, show, edit, we need to have screens for. Destroy, update, and create. These are things that are going to happen on our controller and we actually don't need any uh, views for. So we can actually get rid of those. So if you were to do this, and you can completely do this the way that, that I'm showing you now, is you can generate the model and generate the controller. Delete the views so that you only have these four views. And you can start to then flesh out each of these new edit, show, and so forth as uh, we've done in the past with our Rails um, blog example. So you'll have to write the code to show something, delete it, edit it, and so forth. Now, that is a good practice to do and something that you should get very comfortable doing. Um, but I also want to show you something that is in Rails called a scaffold. And what's really cool about this is that it's going to generate all of the model, controller, and views that we need, but it's also going to know that we're creating this res resource that has these functions and actually fill them in for us using the data that we pass to it. So in this case, a description that's going to have a type of string. So the way that scaffold generation works is that we're going to pass in a singular name. So we're going to do something very similar to model here. 
but we're going to do pin and then description string. And this will generate our pin model, our pins controller, which will be capitalized like this. Um, this will be our pin model and our views. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to go ahead and keep this up on the screen here. So I'm still in my project. I'm going to go ahead and run that. And what will happen is that we'll see a lot more has been created than when we do the standard generate model, generate controller. And the reason for that is if we go look now at our pins controller, you will see that we have a whole bunch of code already defined for us. So uh, in here we have our index, we have our show, we have new, edit, uh, create, update, destroy. And then we have a couple things that are helpers for us. So we have set pin. Uh, we use this to be able to, at the top of each of these methods, um, actually go out and get our pins. So if you'll see at the very top here, before action set pin on show, edit, update, and destroy. So what that does is that actually preloads what at pin is. So now at pin dot destroy will destroy the pin that we are on. Um, at pin dot new, this is going to be a create, so we won't do that there. Um, but in each of these situations, you would normally have at pin equals and then do a search for it there. But it already is defined in there because of this set pin method that gets called way down here. So pin dot find params ID. Um, same goes for edit, update, and destroy. So we can see we already have all this controller code, which is awesome. So this is generated code, so you want to keep that in mind and you want to take a look at it. There's a few things here that are happening as far as um, two different types of gets on each of these URLs, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but we have a pretty complete controller here for now. Uh, we're going to be adding to this as we add new features. But now let's go look at the model. So now we have a pin model. There's nothing in here. This is pretty normal. We haven't added anything um, as far as validation or uniqueness. Um, we should probably do something like validates presence of description. And that would allow us to make sure that you can't create a pin that does not have a description. So we'll go ahead and leave that there. Uh, and then let's finally go check out our views. So now we have this pins view folder. And inside there we have all of these items that we need. And you'll see that it's already got for us a form partial. So this form partial is being used. Uh, and again, it's been generated, so it, it looks pretty similar to what we would have written ourselves. Um, but there's a few extra things in here like uh, error explanations and things like that. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And one final thing I want to look at is our routes folder. So let's go ahead and find config routes. And you'll see that resources pins has been added for us. So what that means is if we run rake routes, we will now see that we have slash pins, slash pins slash new, slash pins slash ID slash edit, all of the different routes that we need to actually create, edit, uh, show, and destroy pins. Now, right now, our users and our pins are not related to one another. Uh, we will do that in the next video, but this is really powerful for being able to get that basic CRUD operation created. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look in our app and see what's happening. So now if we refresh our page, uh, you'll see that we generated our scaffolding. We actually need to run db, uh, rake db migrate so that we actually create the tables. So let's do rake db migrate. That will go ahead and create our pins table. So you can see that here. Rails is, does a really good job of telling us what's happening here. So you can see migrations are pending. Now if we refresh our screen, we'll see that we've uh, come back to our, our app. Now, one of the things that scaffolding does do that um, is not great is that it, it adds a bunch of CSS to our page. So you'll see here that we've kind of lost some of our CSS. Things are getting a little bit wonky. Uh, and that's because if we go back into Atom, you'll see that it's actually created a style sheet for us. So if we go into Assets, uh, both under JavaScripts and style sheets, you'll see that we have this pins.coffee file, which is a coffee script file. But we also have this pins.css uh, file and a scaffolds file, 
we don't want the scaffolds file. So what I'm going to do is just delete that. And we can keep the pins um, SAS file in there for now. We're not using it currently. There's nothing in it, so we're good. But now if we come back and refresh our page, we should be back to our regular bootstrap. So just keep in mind if you do use scaffold that that might happen. Uh, and we now have a pins path. So if we look in here, we have pins underscore path. So we can link this link up here, this pins tab, to our pins. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and close this out because we don't need it anymore. And let's take a look at our layout. So under layouts, application.html.erb, here's that pins link. So let's go ahead and get rid of our href and do a erb link to. We're going to go ahead and do pins. And let's see, let's keep these all standardized. Let's do single quotes here and single quotes there. And we now have access to pins path. So now we can go ahead and refresh our page, click on pins, and you'll see that we have uh, slash pins is taking us to pins slash index or pound index. So that's going to be the index method. And you'll see here that we're just going to list out any pins that we have. We automatically have a link to new. So if we do pins slash new, and then you'll see that we have our description. So we can go ahead and say, um, this is our first pin. Go ahead and create a pin. And the pin was successfully created. That's our notice warning that we have flashing on our screen. And then here's description. This is our first pin. We can edit our first pin. This is our first edited pin. And you'll see that it updates there. If you click on back, it'll take you back to this pins tab. And we'll want to actually set this so that if you hit pins, that the active tab is going to move over and so forth. But uh, that's all just pure CSS, so have fun with that. Uh, but here you'll see that here's our first pin. We are in some kind of table, it looks like here, with show, edit, destroy. So if we come in and make another pin, we can do that. And now we have two pins. We can show it, and we can destroy it. Pin is successfully destroyed. So really powerful. Um, the scaffold has created all of those things for us. And we want to be able to maybe show these off in a different way. But we first need to associate our pins with our users. So right now, you notice up here, we're not even logged in. And we're able to view all the pins, create pins, destroy pins. That is not really what we want to happen. Um, we want to be able to let Maybe we let logged out users see the pins, but not interact with them. So we might keep the index page. But there's a few things like show, uh, let's say like edit and destroy and create that should not be accessible to outside users. So in the next video, we'll actually go in here and link up our pins to our users and take a look at what device will give us to be able to do that.